Welcome everybody to On Podcast, the On Microsoft Podcast, where we talk about Microsoft stuff on a podcast. I'm your co-host today, Kareem Anderson. I'm joined by the world's greatest co-host, Arif Bacchus. And we are also joined by a legend uh, in the Microsoft and just tech journalistic uh, industry. So uh, we will be introducing Mary Jo Foley uh, along with us today, and she's going to be sitting in. And we're going to be talking about all things Microsoft, uh, especially in the last week uh, or two weeks, we've had an explosion of information, ton of news, and she's going to help us sort through it with all of her knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, I want to say thank you for joining us. It's been great to uh, see you. I've been following you, obviously, on Windows Weekly and everywhere else you're at uh, since we can't meet in person like we used to at I know. Uh, Ignite. Yeah. Exactly. So glad, glad to see you again and be able to talk with you directly. And again, saying thank you. Um, I do the reporting here on the quarterlies. Uh, yep. I am about four years of veteran, so I'm not very good at it. I, I'm <laughs> learning. So I, I go to get insight from, you know, a bunch of other people who report on it as well, like yourself, uh, yep. Paul, Brad, a bunch of other people, just to kind of get uh, the mm-hmm. context for these numbers uh, when yeah, I report yeah. them as well. Um, I'm not, I'm that, no financial expert either myself. Um, so <laughs> I, like a lot of times I look at the numbers, I'm like, so is this really what I think is happening or not really what I think is happening? Right. Well, this yeah. is why we podcast, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the blind leading the blind, right? <laughs> there we go. Uh, but before we get into all of that deep stuff, we just had a quick question about, you know, because uh, we want everyone, all of our audience, who I believe follow you guys anyway, but just to sort of a kind of refresh, we wanted to see what you are using these days, just as far as tech and stuff. You know, we're going to get into some of the hardware, get all the good stuff yeah. out of the way, and then we'll get into all the like nitty gritty teams and enterprise numbers cool. and whatnot. So what kind of hardware are you using um, these days? So I am like, as you guys may know, a very simple user when it comes to technology. Like I, I always joke that I'm one of the quote normals, right? Um, mm-hmm. I use tech to do my job. I don't use tech for tech's sake. Um, so I feel like I'm at a disadvantage compared to a lot of you who cover Microsoft because a lot of you like review laptops and review phones and you use all the latest and greatest. And I'm like, you know what, as far as me using tech, I am a very simple needs person. And so here's my setup. I have a Surface Laptop 3 as my daily driver still. Um, I have a Google um, Pixel 6 Pro I just got um, about a month or two ago, which I, I have mixed feelings about, um, <laughs> <laughs> like everybody, I think. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, you know, beyond that, I don't use a lot of tech. Like, like people are like, do you have another laptop? I have, like, one backup laptop that my uh, Windows Weekly co-host, Paul Therat, gave me because he, he <laughs> reviews so many laptops. He just has stacks of them at his house. And I'm like, I need a backup laptop because, um, like, I, during the pandemic, my Surface laptop had um, basically a failure due to the motherboard, and I didn't have a backup laptop. I had to go down to Best Buy and buy one because I didn't have another one. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, it would be good to have like at least one other laptop in the house. So now I have uh, one of the HP, I think it's the one of the Elite Books with an AMD Ryzen in it um, as my backup. That So I use that sometimes, but um, it's most mostly my backup laptop. But other than that, like really, I don't have a lot of tech. I have podcasting equipment. Um, but I don't have like, I don't have HoloLens. I don't have anything else like that in my house or um, multiple phones or multiple devices. I just, that's, I just have what I use basically, you know. Have you no, ever used I, Apple stuff? Uh, Kareem is a person that likes criticizing Apple. He does oh it all man. the time. So do I hate you ever it. use Apple stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've used Apple products twice ever. And, you know, so many people are like, it's so much easier. You know, it's easier if you're used to Apple and if you're used to Windows, it's not easier. I don't care what people say, like it's a pretty hard switch, right? And so I used, I forget what the Apple actually sent me like years ago, an iMac and I I was ready to turn (laughs) out the window. I'm like, I can't, I just don't know how to use this. And it's just a big switch when you've used Windows your whole life, right? Right. And and then I had a a first generation iPad because I bought one right when it came out because I'm like, okay, this seems like something I would love. And I liked it, but I was kind of disappointed with it. And then I never bought another iPad after that. I'm like, eh, it was okay. <laughs> I tried it, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm not. I'm not an Apple user, and um, 
like a lot of my my personal family are iPhone like uh, total iPhone lovers and I'm like yeah I'm gonna stay with Android because I think it's good for the ecosystem to have some choice yeah no I mean I am uh, in total agreement with everything you just said because my wife is she uses Apple like and I I actively get her Apple stuff because it just makes my life yeah. easier having to not like walk her through some of the things I kind of go through <laughs> at least on the Windows you don't side. have to be the IT but, guy right yeah. exactly <laughs> Uh, and it's not that I criticize necessarily. I try to put things in perspective. Like we just had a discussion off mic uh, on our in our uh, in, um, Teams thread yeah. about the numbers for Apple. And, you know, they were talking about like how many yeah. devices they have. And I was like, you know, perspective. Like, yeah, it's a huge number. Yeah. It's great. And if you're an Apple fan, it's awesome. But I'm like, yeah. you know, one individual could own four devices easily between yeah. AirPods, a watch, yeah. one iPad. And the mm-hmm. family's iMac or whatever. And I'm like, that's yep. one household that could, you know, if there's even just two people, you don't even need yep. necessarily need to have a whole family. And that's eight devices versus the Windows, which again is a little harder. And, and you know, yep. Microsoft does their own kind of fudging with numbers. But when they yep. specifically said Windows 10 and 11, I'm like, those are mostly laptops. They are. So you, they're, you're going to need to have someone who owns one or two laptops and maybe mm-hmm. a two in one version because they don't make tablets really. So, it's right. a little hard. It's that's perspective. That's all I try. So when people are like gushing about yeah. the M1 and all these things, I'm like, yeah, that's great for the industry. I'm glad that they make that yeah. chip and it's awesome. But I'm like, perspective wise, like, you know, they're not huge. Uh, you know, as people would say, you see these YouTubers like, ah, I've just moved back to an M1. I'm like, yeah, for now. And then you'll probably just okay. place it with some other things, you know, in, in the interim. Yeah. Just all perspective. It is. And you know, uh, you're bringing up a really interesting point because I feel like. A lot of people in the Apple ecosystem assume that Microsoft must do everything Apple does, right? And I'm like, why are you assuming that? They're very different companies with really different business models and a really different set of customers. And everybody keeps saying, like, when's Microsoft going to do the big push of Windows on ARM? And I'm like, you know, I think that's going to stay a really tiny business for them. And it's not going to be their main business because they're an Intel shop. They are. That's what they are, right? (laughs) Well, I mean, and and with all that being said, like, you know, the idea, I mean, I think you and Paul have talked about this constantly about Mm -hmm. thin clients and like until everyone's kind of made the either hybrid maneuver, which is Microsoft's positioning Mm -hmm. or the full uh, into cloud, you know, these ARM devices aren't really a reality for most businesses or things like that. And, And when they do become that, Apple may be, you know, looking to, you know, figure out their cloud situation in terms. So right now it works for them to have uh, a dedicated M1 device, you know, these laptops that are amazing. Yep. Uh, but when it starts moving to cloud and we really start pushing for ARM, it's going to be a whole, you know, it's a different ballgame for everybody. It is. I, I, I just had a, had the chance to interview the guy who's like the head product manager of of uh, Windows 365, you know, this new virtualization thing they announced last year. And I said to him, I, do you see this as the future of consumers? Like, is this is this what consumers are going to do at one point? Like, everything's going to be virtualized on a thin device? He's like, yeah. Yeah, that is what we think. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, here we go. <laughs> that's that's where they're <laughs> yeah. going. And Apple's not going that way, right? <laughs> at least not right now. Um, not right uh, now. If, yeah. if the industry is does follow that manner, they, you know, they'll be able to pivot. They have yeah, you know, they will. all the money that God could ever want. So they'll, they'll they'll be able to transition very easily. I know that really puts it in perspective, right? When you see Apple earnings for the quarter and Microsoft earnings for the quarter, like Microsoft just had their first 50 plus billion quarter. But then you're like, right. oh, but look at Apple, right? It's like, wait a minute, it's like double that, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of which, which kind of leads us in our third question, I'll let uh, Eric ask that one. So we just had this whole big chat here about Apple and Surface and hardware. So what's your take on the Surface lineup and the Surface business in 2022? Microsoft just came off. uh, It's a considerable product launch. They had the Duo 2, the Surface Laptop Studio, the Pro 8, and even in education, the Laptop SE. So what's your take on the Surface lineup and the business side of the Surface things heading into this year? Um, You know, I think they're going to kind of stay the course, which they've set for themselves, which is incremental updates to their core product line. And I I just I see a lot of people saying, like, they're going to come out with some crazy new device and some new thing that we've never seen before. I'm like, maybe it just seems like kind of a stretch, though, because I feel like most of what they're doing right now is trying to improve on the like four or five core lines that they have. Right. And. Mm -hmm. Every time they have a refresh of hardware, it's mostly just like adding new, a, a faster chip or adding a 
better resolution screen or something like that. And it's not like, let's overhaul the whole product line, right? Yeah. The, the part of the Surface line, I have to say that I'm the most disappointed by is the Duo. I'm so sad about the Surface <laughs> Duo because I had so many hopes for that thing. <laughs> You, I, you, I, you and all of us. I know. I, I actually, because they wouldn't give me a review unit for the Duo 2, I went and bought one. And I brought it home. And every time I went to use it, I just, I'd open it and I'd be like, this is so hard to figure out. I give up. And I, I just gave up on even doing a review because I, I said to myself, it's not intuitive. Like somebody can't just pick this up and use it because of how the software experience is. I feel like icons are moving around. You don't know why things are moving. Why are things opening on one side or the other side? Like, it just doesn't feel like maybe they think there's like a plan, but I don't know what the plan is because every time I use it, I'm like, nope, I thought it was going to do this, but no, it's doing this instead. Right. And I just, I, I just felt like I couldn't even give it a fair review because it was so hard to use. And I, that yeah. would be my review. Like, it's too hard to use. I can't even <laughs> review it. Right. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people feel that way. It's not only you. We we I had a uh, Shane Craig on our show a couple yeah. of months ago, and he said all the same things that you said right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and... He's he's a resident uh, duo expert. I, I yeah. started watching his videos, you know, year a couple yeah. years back when he yeah. first got one, and now he does, you know, I don't know, fifteen videos a week on it. But uh, he, you know, is a window uh, Windows user, and he's sort of you know, a realist, a pragma pragmatic yeah. about his reviews about it, and I agree. I got uh, picked up a, a duo just so I would have an experience with it. And it's not intuitive. And I feel like it's one of those things that the Edge team and I'd say Windows team in the latter half of, of Windows 10 and at least the start of Windows 11 are starting to do where they give you these animated prompts to kind of walk you through things. And I feel like yeah. that's something that the old Windows teams would just kind of take for granted. They'd say like, oh, hey, you know, people use a windows device you know they right. should figure they they've had experience with it it's like well not necessarily not when you drastically yeah. change some things and so i think the duo suffers from that i also think it you know just suffers from um foldables not being mainstream in general like people don't know what right. to do with an expanded screen even on yeah. the uh, uh the galaxy fold people are like yeah I, you know i kind of want to see my youtube on one screen but other than that i don't you know yeah. i don't use multi you know the uh multi windows i don't do all that other stuff and you're like well we we need we need people to uh i don't know use it more often maybe apples will introduce something yeah. that people will be like oh it just works and right. now with the microsoft version of it yeah i feel i feel like it was a hard um position for them to take but they tried to take the idea that if you use multiple monitor with your laptop then it's the same thing as using a dual screen phone and i'm like so i don't think it is the same thing right like I do use a separate monitor with my laptop. And to me, that's just more of an intuitive way of computing. But I feel like people have gotten so used to using a single screen and multitasking with a single screen that it's hard to break that habit on a phone, right? Yeah, well, yeah definitely. Because uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's so far we've been trained to use our fingers with one application yeah. at a time, even though it's, right. you know, 10 point multi, you know, multi finger uh, support. People are using one finger to drag an item totally. and maybe two fingers to pinch it open. That's about as far as we get. It is. So until we start actually being able yeah. to like move the windows in, you know, in the same manner where we can put yeah. maybe three windows in one side of the duo. But yeah, it's necessarily, you know, uh, just one window and one window on these things, which is how the duo operates. I have like right now I have the one note open. I have the window where we're discussing. I have some other uh, articles open just for reference. Like that's how we. No. So when they say it's, you know, just like you do on desktop, that's, you know, like to your point, not necessarily. Right. Right. Yeah. But speaking I, of Windows. Although, wait, oh. I want to ask you guys one, one more question. Yeah, sure. Do you guys think they'll do a Duo 3 this year? Because I do think they're going to try it again. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm in between that. I, I, I know that Zach has his people that he talks to. And, yeah. and I'm sure Paul's got some people that he, you know, is referencing as well. Um, I think that they hold off. It's weird because I think they also have a built-in excuse right now. Yeah. Even if they're, they're working on the R&D for it and everything, they can just say, like, chip supply has put, you know, forced us to kind of shift this off until. Yeah. And they can also do it. Uh, they don't necessarily always have to uh, release it in September or October. No, they true. They are starting to show that they can release things in early January or, like, you yep. know, late late winter, early spring. So mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. they hold off until uh, yeah. 12L is fully tested. 
right. and they can come out with something and yeah. right before build. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You think you think they that Android is like the dream thing for the duo, or or would you have rather had Andromeda OS, which Zach was hands on with the other day? Mm. Uh, I think they had to do Android. I don't think it could have succeeded without Android, even to the little extent that it succe- succeeded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, and it's the same. And we, we, I have people who write into me, email me. They're like, you know, these are the Windows, uh, Windows Phone devotees that are like, yep. you know, it's always <laughs> you can put Windows back on this, and get Windows 10 Mobile back on here. And I'm telling them, I'm like, you, we run into the same issue every time we have this we discussion do. where there's. There's no apps and there's no uh, ecosystem support. Like they right. don't have tie-ins necessarily to like your home uh, speakers or yeah. or your home security or cameras, right. things like that. Google's already built it in. So why they have try and yeah. shoehorn this in? They don't have. They got rid of Microsoft yeah. Health necessarily. Kind of closed that down. So you don't have yep. Fitbit tracking sort of stuff built in. So I'm like, let Google do all the heavy lifting. Yep. And you just make your. And I, I mentioned. I think I wrote this once saying. Work with the Samsung team, like get some guys, yeah. sit down at lunchtime yeah. and say, like, hey, how do you guys build out your multi-window uh, functionality? How do you guys do the uh, task bar mm-hmm. stuff? Like work with them to make Launcher yeah. as almost uh, feature heavy as the yeah. Samsung uh, does on their, on their things. I think you have the perfect dual device at that point. Yep, agree. I feel, I would love to see Microsoft do a really great Android device. Um like, I would be really happy about that because I'm all in on Android for phones. Like, I made my choice. That's my choice, right? And even if they came out with a Windows phone, I don't think I would go back there for all the reasons you just said, right? I'd be afraid, <laughs> right? So um, I I don't like the Samsung ecosystem because I feel like they add too much other stuff that I don't need. Like, right. just their own, they want to have that be their own world. And I don't want that. I want something as pure as the Pixel, but from Microsoft that works. Agreed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I I don't think we could have said it any better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with that being said, we're going to move on to our next topic, which is actually <laughs> Windows 11. Like, we're going to move from mm-hmm. the phone to yep. what you use, we mm-hmm. all use, and we want yep. to know your thoughts on Windows 11. I think so you I, said it ad nauseum, but can you give it to yeah. us again? No, I don't mind. Um, I, I feel like my thoughts kind of have stayed the same pretty much about it. Like, I, they haven't really evolved. And... For me, Windows 11 is fine, right? Because I have very simple computing needs. They didn't change a lot that affects normal users, right? Like if I were a power user, I don't think I would like it as much as I do as a normal user. Like everybody's all upset about like, you can't right click on the taskbar and have the menu come up. I'm like, I didn't even know you could do that. I never did that in my life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, you could do that? I didn't know, you yeah. know? Right? <laughs> Um, and I actually like the new start menu. I may be in a minority saying that, but like, I think it's great to show people a list of their recently opened documents because normal people don't know where their documents are. Like if you say to somebody like me or my mom, like, where did you just store that? I'm like, I don't know. Somewhere. Is it in the cloud? Is it local? <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I don't pay attention to that. Right. I just hit save and I'm like, oh, where did I just save that? I don't know. Was it like in the right folder? I don't even know. I'm so I'm a super disorganized user, as you can probably tell from me just saying that. Um, but um, for me, it's it's fine. Like having my icon centered in the taskbar, I don't care. I don't even notice it. Um, rounded corners, dark mode, don't care. Like if it's there, it's fine. I don't care. You know. Um, Notepad still works great. That's my main app that I use most of the time. <laughs> I like Edge. Um, I'm not happy that they're making it hard to to choose your browser, and I hope they do backtrack on that as they've indicated they will, because um, I think people should have a choice of what they use for a browser on Windows. But all up, like for me, it's fine. Like I I I think they did do the best of both worlds in that they changed some things and started making it look prettier without wrecking it and without changing it so much that it's impossible to figure out like it's no windows 8 right (laughs) like (laughs) when windows 8 came out i just remember looking at that thing going what the heck like i don't even know where to start (laughs) right and i i feel like with windows 11 it's kind of even if you even if you didn't follow along as it was being developed you can kind of figure out what to do yeah Yeah. no i totally agree i think we're all in the all three of us and probably the rest of the billions who or millions who use Windows 8 have a little yeah. PTSD about things moving around. Yeah. <laughs> but I think like you, yeah. to, to your point, uh, there is, as far as options are concerned, you can 
obviously shift uh, your task bar back to the left. It, I mean, it's I don't know, you really can't. four inches. It's a four inch <laughs> yeah. difference from where you had it before. And I find myself with this new setup actually using search way more often yeah. than I did uh, in mm -hmm. Windows 10 because in Windows 10, I had meticulously cultivated this whole start menu with the yeah. you know live tiles and settings and everything yeah. like that. But I find now because it doesn't function nearly the same way, and maybe it'll come back to it, yeah. that I just go to the search and type in the app that I'm looking for yeah. or I type in the folder or, app or file that I'm needing. Uh, and I realized too that, uh, again, I use my wife as sort of the normal user. I like to think that I'm a step above that and I'm not a yeah. power user by any means, but she saves everything to the desktop and then she'll yeah. dump everything from the desktop. So she, you know, she'll go into, an, I think, what is it, a finder for um, mm -hmm. Mac users or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever their file explorer version is. Yep. She'll go into that rarely. She'll usually just kind of organize from the desktop, like, all right, I put it there. I used it. Now I delete it. I saved yeah. it there, <laughs> opened up the, the application. Now I delete yep. it. So yep. you know, to your point of like where I save things, people are just like, I saved it. I, first thing I hit save and the save saved it on the desktop and yep. know to reference it from there. Yeah, I think Windows I, 11. I think it's nice. I think it's nice. <laughs> I think it looks prettier. Um, it's working okay for me on both my devices that I put it on. I don't. I don't have a lot of complaints. Every. I feel like every time we do our our podcast Windows Weekly, there's just like so many complaints from people. Like I can't do this. I used to be able to do this. <laughs> Task manager, file manager, blah blah blah. I'm like, oh my goodness, right? Like, okay, like it's an operating system. It's just the way you access your stuff, right? Like, why are why are people so crazy about it? <laughs> as long as people have a web browser and right. and a file explorer, I feel like that that's all that they need Me too. because most people just yeah. go on Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and that's it. It is. Right. I spend I spend I would say 90% of my time in the browser. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But yep. I mean, Leo, Leo, and Paul, and you have cultivated a very particular audience. You guys, I think. I know we do. Draw, we have draw the the power users. So there are we people do. that are like, I have this set up to this thing, and it links right to my control panel, and now control exactly. panel is being shoved in the settings menu. And it's yep. like most people are like, I, I don't understand how to, I install an app, and it just takes up space. I don't even know how to get rid of it. Same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's somewhere on my machine. I don't really know where it is, and it's going to be hard to get it off. <laughs> What, uh, I have a, an addendum to that question. Uh, with that being said, what would you like to see uh, kind of go going forward in Windows 11? Like, I know that they're slowly, I mean, pain, painfully taking their time updating the UI to be consistent. Yeah. But other than that, are right. there any features or anything that you would like to see? I would like um, a couple things. I'd like search to be better. Oh, yes. Definitely. Across <laughs> the board. I mean, in, right. in the store and on the, the desktop. Yeah. Because I feel like the way it's laid out, even like if you're not somebody who pays any attention and you just hit the search button, you may not even realize you're only searching within one category and you're not actually yeah. searching the other categories, right? And I, I watch my mom do this sometimes and she's like, I can't find this. Like, and I'm like, why are you searching in there? And she's like, I didn't know I was searching in a place. Like I thought search was <laughs> everywhere, right? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, you know what? That's a great point because um, search is slow and it, it often does not find the stuff that I know is on my machine. I'm like, where, yes. so what could I do better to make search work better, right? So yeah, that's yeah. one frustration I have, and I'm sure they're frustrated by that too, just because search is so fundamental to an operating system. It should be way cleaner, and it should work way faster and way better, I feel like. Um, I, I wonder if that's uh, endemic of their like ability to not keep up with Google, because uh, yeah, I, was, I, I was comparing like Google's photos to something and I had put in a random phrase. It was very generic, but it was able to pull mm -hmm. up the exact thing I was looking for. And I found myself in Windows, you know, it's not apples to apples, but when I, when I name a file, I have to add a dot in there yep. somewhere. That's what will help break it from like a web search or a photo search right. or an app search. And it'll just say, oh, you added a dot from whatever it is. Now it's a file. And I'll look at files. Yep. Yep. So I had to like change my way of doing things to, to fit yeah. their search. Yeah, exactly. So that that's kind of tough, right? I mean, I'm like, oh, come on, guys. That's that seems kind of basic, right? I'd like I'd like the start menu to let you um, modify more easily what's pinned there. Because um, I feel like 
it should be up to the user what they want pinned there and how many things they want pinned there and the configuration, how they want them pinned. Um, I don't want the fact that every time I download a new app that that's pinned there. Like I, I want to be able to have it like I want my preferences to kind of stay with it. Right. Yes. And then the other thing is they got to get rid of the mail and calendar app that's built in and put the new outlook in there like the. I feel there like the, the one outlook that's like the same one web, web wrapper. Do you Let's like the go. web wrapper more than the desktop app, the uh, uh, UWP apps? I know. So because I live in the browser so much, I feel like I'm okay with the web app, right? Um, it's not the same as, like, I, I used to use the local Outlook client for Windows, and I don't use that anymore. But I, when I did, it had so many more bells and whistles and things you could do. And I think if you're a power user of email, you're going to hate the change and, and you're going to want it to be gradual and kind of get used to it. But I feel like the calendar app and the mail app that's built in now, it's not for power users, right? It's right. still pretty yeah. basic. It just, it's so different. I'm like, why didn't you just use Outlook? You already had Outlook. Just make Outlook the email, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm with you. I tried, uh, I wrote, a piece I kind of experimented for like six months using the PWA yeah. and I find myself being able to use it but I also find myself having to go to the dedicated app to set spam rules like to do all right. of the like yep. set all of the behind the work stuff of organizing folders setting yeah. rules and all that stuff and then I can yep. jump right into the the modern app that they have yeah. or the PWA and be just fine yep. but if I need to go in and like you know say I get a ton of spam from one particular thing I feel like I can't do that Right. With any kind of precision uh, no. in the in the web app, so hopefully they'll, like you said, combine some of that those yeah. features and stuff like yep. that. I hope so too. Yeah, but I think we're going to hear about that one outlook thing fairly soon. Like in the next couple months, I think they're going to at least be like, "Ta-da! Here it is!" Right. And um, I I don't know how they're going to present the migration path for people who are already using mail and calendar. Like I think they're going to try to make it so they're holding their hand and not just a sudden like, and hey, we're going to replace this and you're going to love it. Right. It's going to be more, we're going to pin it there and we're going to let you play with it and try it. So I think they're going to bring people gradually along and get them used to it. And then they'll hopefully think that that's a good way to go. I wonder if they do something like they did with Groove where you were able to, at one one instance, uh, have Groove and the Windows Media Player available yeah. at the same time. They were a bit mm -hmm. redundant, uh, but at some point, they kind of just switched the, all the code over. It still says yeah. Groove for people who know where it's pinned at, mm -hmm. but now it, they give you that new, like, oh, welcome to your new. Yeah, uh, that makes sense, right? Like, they, I think they're just trying to make it so people aren't afraid and like, oh, they're changing email. That's something I live in and I need it. And yeah, <laughs> yeah it is pretty vital. <laughs> yeah. But it's more vital than Groove. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah, was so those, are, those are like my yeah. top three, three, four things that I'd like to see them do. I don't I, care I about. Think you speak for other, millions. Yeah, I don't care about like. I know there are people who care a lot about like, you know, the slider buttons looking co like consistent and Zach, <laughs> That's Zach, <sad>. yeah. <laughs> And, I mean, and like, you know, oh, my God, like this, this has a, this is over here and it should be over here. I'm like, you know what? That doesn't matter to me at all. Like, I care more about the core functionality and it just working better and more intuitively than I care about the look and feel. I'm just not a UX person that much, really. Is that, is that why they put panels in charge of Windows? Because <laughs> before him, there were all these inconsistencies, things didn't yeah. match. I wrote a piece for my other publication saying that Windows 11 finally matches hardware and software mm -hmm. together because yeah. the same guy is in charge of both. So yeah. is Panos with Panos in charge, is Windows off to great things? Yeah, so I think they did that intentionally, right? Bef even before they put Panos in charge of Windows, they I don't know if you guys remember this, they made a big campaign out of how... Um, hardware, software, and services were all working together yeah. every time they designed something, right? And they right. were saying, this is why things work better now, and they look more consistent, and they work better together. But it wasn't really true. It was like they said that that's how things were evolving. But until they put Panos in charge of Windows, it still felt, to me at least, very choppy and not not really integrated. Once they put him in charge, it's like every meeting, they're gonna Panos will be in there like, okay, like, does Windows actually work well with Surface and with, you know, the cloud services that we have? And if it doesn't, we need to make that work because that's our all up offering, right? So I think I think it was smart to put him in charge that way because 
their whole contention was the reason we're doing hardware is so that we can do a better job on software. Okay, well, that didn't ring true until you put Panos in charge of mm -hmm. Windows, right? Well, I had wrote, I had written several articles about how he Panos was always let down by the software. Like he came yeah. out with, uh, and, and I wrote this. I started writing this about the Lumia 950. Yep. Like, that was one of the phones I could tell he was visibly yeah. not ex pumped about, but he had to kind of right. go out and talk about it. I remember it. that. Yeah, he uh, just he was he like, loved, he yeah, loved the here hardware. it is. <laughs> yeah. He went on for like 10 minutes about the hardware, and once he had to like start talking about Windows 10 Mobile, he was like, all right, and we're moving on to something else. Yep. <laughs> Here's the Surface <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, And I felt the same way, the same thing happened with the Surface Pro X, uh, yep. with the uh, a lot of the Surface Pro uh, updates he was making, yep. especially for the Duo. Like That was mm -hmm. just one of the bigger letdowns. Like The device, the hardware itself is... Well, it's Beautiful. Purpose, pretty, yeah, pretty spectacular. But I like the hardware software, a lot. I love yep. the hardware. Yep. Uh, but he was again, once again, let down by the hard uh, the software and the integration yep. of, you know, Android in general, switching from yep. I would assume what was going to be Windows 10X to Android and yep. all the other stuff that he wasn't able to be in charge of. So, to your right. point, maybe he won't be let down by the software because he's in charge of it now. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Or at least overseeing <laughs> it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe. So what's our next question for her, huh? Yeah, I think this, again, it kind of ties in with what we've been saying so far, but what do you think Microsoft should focus on in 2022 and heading into the future? So I'm going to say something that you guys are going to be surprised about. I think you'll be yeah. surprised. Windows Phone. <laughs> no, gaming. I think they should totally oh. do gaming. Yeah. Wow. Because here's I think, why. I, think Paul just I don't said care about share. gaming at all. I don't care about gaming at all. But if you look at gaming, it's the one place in Microsoft's lineup where they have had success with consumers. I feel right. like they have had terrible success everywhere else because they've broken promises, dropped products, like led people down weird paths like Teams consumer, right? Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I but I feel like gaming, people like them, they trust them, they like what they're doing, people are excited about the roadmap and what they're buying, right? I mean, Activision's their biggest acquisition ever by a huge amount, right? So obviously they're all in on this gaming thing. And I think it's smart because they they've already kind of cornered the enterprise, like they've got that, right? And they're doing all the right things, I feel like, in Azure and in Office, and they they know what they need to do over there. But if they really want to get consumers, they need something that consumers like from Microsoft, and that's gaming. Yeah, I mean, where's my question then to that point? Do you do you see them trying to pivot gaming into something bigger than that? I'm, I mean, I don't like using the term metaverse. It gives me the, the heebie-jeebies because no, it, no, it's such a generic, uh, like yeah. a nebulous term. It is. But uh, I, my fear is that if they focus on gaming more than they currently are, and I feel like Phil Spencer and, and the division, the whole group themselves are doing yep. a great job by pacing themselves. If yep. they focus too much on it, they may stumble by trying to do what they did with Edge. Like I felt like when Edge first came out, mm. they yeah. paced themselves perfectly well. They were uh, yep. a very slimmed down version of Chromium and they had mm. all of this like goodwill because you know it was just working much better than Chrome. Yeah. And then they decided, oh, we can make money off of this somehow. Or we can grow this. Right. And then they started doing a bunch of other bad you know, yeah. questionable decisions right right yeah i mean that's the problem right so the part of the business they're also trying to grow in addition to gaming and consumer is their advertising business right and that's why you right. keep seeing these weird decisions i feel like with edge is because edge um, Edge, Bing, and MSN are together in this group at microsoft called web xt web experiences right and so when they make a decision about edge it also is informed by what they want to do with advertising, right? And um, wow. that percolates up. And and gaming right now is not part of that group, but I think right. they're I think they are moving Office 365 consumer into that group too because it's like oh, here's all our consumer stuff here, right? And I feel like gaming at least right now at Microsoft is its separate own thing with Phil Spencer running it as almost like the way they run GitHub and the way they run LinkedIn, like almost like an independent company, right? So I don't I don't think you're going to see them like over advertise it. There will be ads probably in Game Pass if there aren't already, like there'll be more, but I don't feel like it's as it's as um, driven by what Bing and what MSN and uh, the advertising business wants and needs. I feel like it's independent enough that it may not get wrecked, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, then I think that that's actually I I did not expect that from you. Like I said, I, yeah, that was a shocker. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> no, yeah, because you know crazy. what? If I look at their enterprise business and you say, what aren't they doing in enterprise that they need to be doing? I don't know what I would answer. You know, like they're doing like everything they can in the cloud to try to go after AWS, right? They're they're adding new services. They're building out 50 to 100 data centers a year. Like that's a huge amount of capital yeah. expenditure, right? Yep. I mean, they're putting all their money into the cloud and Office 365, Microsoft 365, they're adding features and yeah, they're increasing prices, which they should if they want to build their profits, right? Not It's not great for consumers, but that's what they should be doing. Um, you know, they're doing good things about managing their devices with Intune and not abandoning configuration managers. So I'm like, I don't know what I would say on the enterprise side, really. I mean, they're they're kind of the reason I love covering Microsoft is they get their finger in every pie, right? Like yep. there's no business they are not in except for the, on the consumer side. There there are a lot of businesses they're not in. But on they, enterprise, they they're in everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did try, right? But enterprise, they're in everything. And they're just building out and out and out and out. So I don't, I can't really think like if I had to say what in enterprise aren't they doing that they should be doing? I, I can't really think of something. You know? <laughs> no, um, I thought when you were talking about uh, gaming as well, that the way that they could have pivoted and I thought was some of their hopes were pinned on was Mixer. I, yeah. when I, you know, I go in my like tinfoil hat yeah. conspiracy theory room and I yeah. try to put these lines and Mixer was one that I thought, and I think with Clipchamp, I think they purchased yeah. is how they were going to pivot uh, Xbox, uh, you know, being able for people who are streamers, you, yeah. you know, they couldn't, they couldn't do Twitch, but if right. you can get people to sign up for uh, OneDrive because you're mm -hmm. recording all your stuff and saving it straight to the cloud yep. and then publishing it right from there, and we have all the tools for you, they can tap in the enterprise market saying, like, if you are, uh, you know, a business small, you know, like kind of their pitch that they did with it when they bought Clipchamp was like, hey, yeah. if you're a small business and you need a production team, we have the tools for you, uh, and it all saves to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And this is how they kind of tie in the platform of being able to publish uh, the videos that you save in OneDrive yeah, to right. Mixer or whatever, which also yeah. shares the property of Xbox. And so mm -hmm. now that's how you get X mm -hmm. Office 365 mm -hmm. mixed into Xbox saying, hey, if yeah, you want the OneDrive point. storage yep. for all your Xbox stuff, just get Office 365 and you get all the like, you know, yeah. Office stuff as well, but mainly you want the storage. And that's yep. how they kind of put those two together. But no, that's, like you said, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know what word is key to always listen for um, that I listen for in every speech from them and every press release, you know, metaverse is like the new hot buzzword, but the real thing that they're going after is creators, right? Like they keep right. saying that word, right? Yes. And that's right. what they mean. Communities, creators, commerce, like there are all these words that begin with C um, for some reason <laughs> um, that they're, if you look at what to them, the metaverse is, it's those things, right? And they don't really care about the metaverse, right? They care about how do we get creators? And if we hook creators in, either through consumer or business, like you're saying, um, then we can pull them in the rest of the way, right? Like if we get yes. you to come in through the consumer door, then we'll get you to the enterprise. If you come in through the enterprise and you wanna be a creator in your off hours, or even as your day job, then we'll pull you over to the consumer side. And I think that, like if you say, what is Microsoft's definition of the metaverse and what's their interest? It's creators and communities. Those two things. Like that's why they wanted to buy TikTok. That's why they wanted yep. to buy Pinterest, right? And Discord. All those things have that exact same thing in common, right? Like how do you get to the creators and how do you get to the communities? And that's that to me is what they mean when they say metaverse, but they want to be trendy and cool. So they say metaverse. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Yeah, uh, and this kind of goes into our, our next question, which is, and then this is, I, I I follow you for all of these things. Whenever one of these things happens, <laughs> I'm like, what does Mary Jo have to say about it? That's of good all to know, of I the guess. Reorgs, <laughs> yeah, of all of the reorgs that have happened under Nadella, I know there have been like too many to count. Millions, right? <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> which one do you think has had the most impact, or will have the most impact? Uh, so going I'm forward? gonna I'm gonna give you two, okay? Okay. Uh, maybe even three. Sure. And, I, and they're all very unusual, right? Um, and I don't think people have paid enough attention to these reorgs. Because the Panos one is the obvious one, like making Panos in charge of Windows or like reorging the entire sales staff. Okay. But I think there are three others that are kind of a little bit under the radar that I keep paying attention to because I'm like, there's something's going to come out of these three, right? And one is mm -hmm. 
Um, last year, they made a guy named James Phillips the head of their digital transformation group. And I hate the word digital transformation. I, it's even worse than metaverse. It's so terrible. <laughs> right? It means nothing to me. And I'm just, every time I hear it, I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. But they put 15,000 people under James Phillips, right? Wow. And it's all wow, the things that N Nadella cares the most about, right? So it's um, like Azure. Uh, it's Azure plus AI, Power BI, Synapse, Cosmos DB, all the stuff that people's eyes glaze over. But I'm like, that's all the stuff Nadella talks about all the time. You hear him talking about like um, data, like data company companies with a data strategy. That's all under James Phillips, right? And James Phillips used to work directly for Satya as like his TA, I think, um, technical assistant <laughs> or his assistant. So like they're yeah. like this, right? And I'm like. James Phillips never talks to the press. Nobody ever gets to hear from James Phillips, right? And I'm like, yeah. this guy, he's sitting over here with 15,000 people doing like really like the rocket science stuff that Nadella cares about in, in terms of being a data-driven company and digital transformation. And I think putting him in charge of all that stuff at once last year was huge. But most people are like, oh, data, digital transformation, blah, whatever, right? Cosmos, I don't even know what that is. Power BI, <laughs> eh, right? Mark my words, that's that group is going to do something. And I don't know what exactly, but I'm like, that's going to do something right there. Um, another one that just happened at the end of last year that I I was lucky to get the information on this one because nobody I didn't think anybody else reported this one was they took Jason Zander, who is the head of Azure, right? And they moved him to report directly to Satya. And then they gave him four really huge businesses at Microsoft and said, you're in charge of this. So they made him in charge of Microsoft Federal, like all the federal business they have, which is gigantic, right? Yeah. Their, their aerospace business. So all the stuff they're doing with Azure Space and working with NASA, Azure Quantum, Quantum Computing, and um, Telcos, like all the deals they're doing with telcos and they called it something like the stem group right and i'm like mm -hmm. oh this is like their strategic initiatives group that he's reporting right now directly to satya and that group is going to do some crazy stuff because now you're taking the synergies of like federal and and space and telcos and quantum you're mixing them all together into some weird sauce and you're going to yeah. be able to use that with your customers outside of those markets too right so I'm like, oh, there's something interesting brewing there too, but I don't know exactly what yet, <laughs> you know, I, like quantum. Yeah. I, I don't really understand quantum computing. Like I, I've written very little about it because I'm like, every time I try to write about it, I'm like, it's so <laughs> over my head. I don't know. <laughs> I know like words about quantum, but I don't really understand any of it. <laughs> right. Uh, we're. I think we're all in the same boat right, on that one. Right. Okay. And then the other one, if I had to pick one more. Um, so do you guys remember when Microsoft hired this guy named Charlie Bell from AWS and it was this big brouhaha, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Like he was he was maybe gonna be the next head of AWS and then he got passed over by Jeff Bezos, right? So his sure. revenge was let me go to Microsoft, right? Let me go work over there. So then, you know, Sacha and I don't know who, Andy Jassy or somebody, they had to have a big powwow because it's like, can we let one of our key AWS guys go work at Microsoft, right? Like, are we going to sue them for a breach of contract or something, right? Uh, and they ended up not suing them, but they took Charlie Bell and they put him in charge of all the stuff that people think is so boring in the cloud, like compliance and all that stuff, right? Security, identity, blah, blah, blah. All the things that are like super key, but not, in the headlines every day and they moved they moved everybody in azure around to get this new structure with charlie bell who i think also is directly reporting to satya now by the way um and so he's running this whole kind of um subgroup within the cloud that's in charge of all the things that enterprises have to have right so i think that's super interesting because you hear about google you know trying to pattern themselves after Microsoft and come after Microsoft in the cloud. But the secret sauce is unless you have these really boring things that enterprises need to, you know, digital identity, security, compliance, you're nothing, right? And Charlie yeah. Bell did that at a did stuff around that at AWS and now he's overdoing it at Microsoft. So I think that could be really big for them in terms of him 
bringing his knowledge and his know-how and applying it over in the cloud. So yeah, all, all of these are like cloud things that I'm mentioning, but I feel like so much of what their strategic priorities are in the future are uh, having to do with the cloud, that that's kind of where I focus a lot of my energy and attention. Well, I was just saying, again, I go, as you're speaking, I went into my conspiracy room for a second. Yeah. And I was wondering, because uh, they're all meeting under Nadella, uh, that if their STEM and the Charlie Bell thing yeah. can work in conjunction, as you said, like he's getting all of the compliance stuff. So like those weird acronyms with the dash numbers that exactly. everybody needs for government <laughs> approval. Yep. If he's, if we have uh, the STEM group already working with them and they're saying like, oh, we need these things, yep. he can go tell Nadella and Nadella can tell him like, hey, these are the compliance things we need. Yep. And you already have the connections. How do we expedite this process? So then you start getting these, you know, yep. multi-million dollar, multi-year uh, contracts yep. with government agencies or government facilities and things like that. So yep. that, that, and again, that'll help them grow because I think we yeah. mentioning for the numbers, you know, their cloud is starting to level out. It isn't, you know, skyrocketing it as it has. It's growing, but yeah. it isn't, you know, limitless. So now they're going to need to right. lock in multi-year versus just like, Oh, we got a big deal Definitely. with Walmart for five years. It's like, no, yeah. we work with the government for 10 years. Exactly. And the thing about Microsoft and the government is, you know, where Google and to some extent Amazon, their employees have been really pushing back and the companies have been kind of like, okay, maybe we won't do some of these government contracts. Microsoft's all in with the government contracts, right? And yeah, like they for don't even, they don't even pretend like they're like, you know, we're going to keep selling to the government. It's our patriotic duty to do that. And like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> right. And yeah. the, Microsoft has some employees who are like, we shouldn't be doing facial recognition. We shouldn't be working with the, you know, INS, all these things. Right. Okay. True. But, Microsoft's just like, yeah, you know what? We're going to keep doing that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll find we'll find the best ethical way to do it, but we're going to do exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I think they will try to make modifications to try to, you know, make it at least ethically more nice, yeah. right? But but they're going to, they're not giving up on the government. And the government, like you're saying, yeah. is like a huge, huge source of money and contracts and long-term oh, yeah. contracts and like, you know, multiple billion dollar contracts so yeah just just not yeah. with hololens apparently right i know that one <laughs> that one seems to be running into some trouble <laughs> yeah i mean it's but the great canceled. thing is that it's not yeah, canceled. the army's being patient <laughs> yeah we're gonna give it to i think it was in uh may i think or something like yeah. that to figure it out yeah so yeah. and i i've written about that too and i, I won't cover it right now because we want to get our next question but yeah. i think that their brain bleed is hurting them with this part of the thing it was well, again one of my conspiracy theories is that mm. with 100 or so plus people leaving plus who knows who's leaving in the future right. that they're having trouble you know uh, uh cultivating this new headset for the army mm. Mm. yeah i uh, feel like i feel like some of the people who left um they wanted to work on consumer stuff and right now hololens is an enterprise play for microsoft right so yeah which is gonna be interesting yeah. into their metaverse conversation but we're yeah. gonna be talking teams now okay uh, I believe on this week's Windows Weekly, you had this, you know, uh, uh, explanation about how Teams is sort of, you know, kind of almost hit a wall. Yeah. For for lack of a better phrase, uh, do you want to let us know what you think, or you know, possible reasons why it might be hitting a wall? Yeah. So, um, you know, Teams growth for the past several months has been slowing, and part of that's understandable when you're as huge. A, a juggernaut as teams right like during the start of the pandemic teams just grew like some astronomical number like the first few months of the pandemic yeah. because everybody had to work from home and they were like how do you do this oh here's we have a group collaboration platform with video and chat here it is right um but over time that's going to start getting saturated it, you know if people are using teams through their office 365 and microsoft 365 accounts you would assume it's going to grow up to that point of however, you know, however, a hundred millions of users of those platforms there are. And beyond that, you got to start figuring out how do you sell it to people who don't have a subscription, right? And they've been trying with the Teams button and Windows 11, you know, getting people, trying to get people <laughs> interested in prosumer use of Teams chat um, and then introducing a new standalone version, Teams Essentials, where you don't have to have the Microsoft 365 subscription to buy that one. But I, I think they're going to hit a wall because at some point it's like, uh, do you stay with Slack? Do you stay with Zoom if that's what your company's on? Or do you like jump into Teams, which may be a complete, uh, like a completely different 
uh, um, kind of look and feel and and experience for your users. And, you know, users don't like that, right? <laughs> like people are like, wait, we're all using Slack and that's only why we're we using Teams, which looks really different. Yeah. It doesn't work the same way at all, right? And all our all our intellectual property is already saved over in Slack. So now you're telling us we have yeah. to, oh, no, forget that. Now we're, now we're going to use Teams, right? So I think yeah. they've got to figure out like, who are the untapped audiences and figure out a way to go after them. That's why you hear them talking a lot about frontline workers, right? Yeah. Who are the shift workers, the people like working in fast food restaurants and hospitals who are, who do, they used to call them deskless workers, right? People who are not information workers. They're like, okay, what if we can get them to use teams? And that's a new part of the market. We really haven't done much to, to tap into yet. Or what if we can get ISVs, you know, like people, people of all different kinds of apps to tap in and tie their apps in. Maybe that'll get people more interested to try Teams if it's really well integrated with Box or Dropbox or whatever, right? Um, so yeah. trying, they're trying all these different things, but it's definitely, it's going to slow, right? And um, they're just trying to figure out, like, how do we keep it going? And like, can we keep it going at the, at, it'll, it'll not keep going at the pace it's been going at, but they want to keep it growing still, right? So, is that yeah, why they definitely. launched this uh, new device trade-in program where they'll actually give you money for your Zoom <laughs> stuff and your Slack stuff? <laughs> it, Probably. I, I, it came right. out of the far from left field. I it never did. imagined them doing that. Yeah. And now here, here again, they're enticing people to try yeah. and climb over that proverbial wall that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, it could. That could be definitely part of it, right? Like they're like, okay, we like they're very they're afraid of Slack. They're way more afraid of Zoom, by the yeah. way. Like whenever you see internal presentations, like they don't focus on Slack, they focus on Zoom. They're like, yeah, Zoom's killing us. They're eating our lunch. Like we're in trouble with Zoom, right? <laughs> the, Slack, they're kind of like, oh, Mark Benioff, you know, he's got them now. Like whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> but they're like, Zoom, we'll, we'll buy we'll buy Slack in a couple of months for seventy. Exactly. Well, because <laughs> I think I think Slack was in the same boat that they're in, and they're both paddling in small boats to begin with. They're both. Right. You know, as much as we talk about Slack all the time, it's still enterprise oriented or, or, or you know, small business oriented. Right. Like, you know, people aren't slacking each other just for fun necessarily. They <laughs> might do it at work for fun. Yeah. But they're not like, I'm going to go home and slack, you know, my best friend across right. town. It's like, no, I mean, they're going to do a Zoom with them real quick to like, you know, play D&D &D or, you know, have a happy hour or something like stuff that people were doing during the pandemic. And then what people end up doing is saying, I have a Zoom account. Let's use it for business. They're working their way back, and that's eating into Microsoft and Slack's, you know, business right now. So yeah. Instead of the other way around. And exactly. as you said, they're trying to circumvent that by going, all right, well, it's it's start, it's at least stem the bleeding from the consumers while yeah. we kind of buffer this out. But do you guys know any consumer using Teams like with their family? That was our next question. No. I don't. Nobody. I, I, <laughs> I tried to get my mom to use it, and she's like, "What is this? Why? Uh, let me go on WhatsApp instead, please." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's so like the, the barrier to entry is so high. It is uh, because again, it's a new app, so you have to one download it. You know, for people right. who don't necessarily know what the Teams button is or on their phone, uh, right. this isn't like Face. You know, Facebook comes with Messenger and all these other things like that, so they know what those yeah. platforms are, yeah. and all the contacts. Like Teams does a right. horrible job. Of filtering the context you contact with, like yeah. I don't, the people yeah. I email aren't the people I talk to no. necessarily on the phone or in FaceTime or right. in video or, or nope. even do, Duo. Nope. They, they don't pull those people in. They pull in like, oh, do you want to like talk to AT and T's customer? No, I don't want to FaceTime <laughs> yeah. AT and T's customer service. Yeah. No, so and the UI, the UI of Teams is still just not friendly, right? I, I like no. trying to explain to somebody, yeah, so you have to go over here. There's a button that says Teams and there's one that says Chat. And then if you want to do, uh, like use a calendar to schedule a meeting, I'm like, oh man, this is just not like easy to explain to normal people, right? Yeah, and I know that they change platforms, but it's still a little kludgy on, it on is. Uh, Windows. It's heavy, it is. takes a while. And there's yeah. still no multi-account support, which uh, which I don't understand why they I haven't know. added it in like in like four years now. <laughs> no, I know, and they they still don't even have Teams Connect working, right? The idea of of yeah. having like the shared channels that's still not really working yet, right? <laughs> well, they also don't have the devices. The same. They, I know that they they have a program for it. And they have a division that's working on it, where they yeah. allow uh, companies to build in team support. But it isn't on like the big things that people are using, like an Alexa or Google. Like, so if they're even if they were going to make a play for consumers in that aspect, like we'll give you the hardware, 
yeah. we'll make it a hands-off experience. Like you don't even have to worry about Windows or your phone. Just you know, the same way that they did with Xbox and Skype. Like it's just there. Yeah. They're not even doing that yet, or at least no. not to the extent that they need to. Exactly. Yep. Well, our last question actually just ties into our consumer question. How many enterprises do you know are using Teams, or, or do you see that a lot? Do you hear people saying like, "We had to choose between Teams and uh, and, and Slack, and so we chose Teams because it was cheaper," or whatever? Yeah, um, I know probably most of the enterprise customers I talk to are Teams users, right? Because okay. it's built into their subscriptions. Um, there's some who are like, "Our company already was on Slack, so we're not using Teams," but more and more, like the the accountants look at this and they're like, wait, so we could be using this for free, right? Like, because it's part of our Microsoft 365 subscription, but we're paying for Slack, but we could be using the <laughs> same thing over here for free, right? So a lot, I feel like a lot when the accountants get involved and they're like, yeah, why, I don't see why we're paying for this, right? That's when more people move over to Teams because it's like, it's already part of your subscription. You're already paying for it, right? And so you've got, you've got all the features, it. yeah. Yeah, also a move that's attracted antitrust concerns on a couple different yeah. fronts. So we'll see if that comes to be anything. <laughs> well, I know Slack's been screaming at the top of their loans for the past three years. Like, yeah. look, look what they're doing. Yep, yep. So. Slack has, and, they, and the antitrust regulators in Europe have been going around asking people like, so is this hurting your business that they integrated Teams into Office? I'm like, ooh, here we go. Right. <laughs> that, that is a good question. I wonder if they're asking the actual employees who are like, yeah, I can't, you know, chat, chat about, you know, the latest TV <laughs> show on Slack. Or are they asking the accountants who are like, oh, this is made for oh, the TV. This is go excellent. 100%. I love this. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah. And I have one final question. One quick one. Okay. I don't know if it's even going to be quick. And I know you like talking about it. But can you explain what Hadoop is? You say <laughs> it all the time. I, look, I even looked it up online and I still am like, what is it? So, you know, I don't even say Hadoop anymore because it's kind of fallen out of favor now. Oh. <laughs> like for a while, it was the new hot kid on the block, and now nobody really cares about Hadoop anymore. Like it's like, yeah, Hadoop, whatever. Like, eh. so. Has we, something else I, replaced it? Yeah. Uh, well, a pa um, what do people talk about now? Apache Spark, they talk about a lot. Oh. Um, it, not, not like a one to one replacement, but uh, I feel like people have moved on to different ideas about. Um, like managing these kind of enterprise platforms. So I don't even say it on Windows Weekly anymore. It's not even a joke anymore. We can't say Hadoop, <laughs> everybody drink. <laughs> well, you, you just said it now. We'll, we'll tell everyone to take a shot. All right, nice. <laughs> so so what are you drinking? I know that you're a big fan of beer. So what, what are you drinking right now? We're about to have a massive snowstorm in I New know, York right? City. So the perfect thing to do is to just sit back and drink some beer. So what are you drinking right now? Okay, so you're going to love this answer. Um, so tomorrow, in the middle of a snowstorm, I'm going to a big beer tasting in my neighborhood. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, so we're going to be tasting wow. um, mostly Imperial Stouts, like like really big uh, bourbon barrel aged stouts that are like, you know, 12, 14, 16 percent. Um, wow. So you only, you only can have a small taste of those if you want yeah, to walk out of there alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're doing that during the snowstorm tomorrow, like we're because we're, we're going to a neighbor's house, so we can just walk over there. And I'm bringing chocolate chip cookies because you know what? What goes with bourbon barrel flavored something? Chocolate, right? <laughs> so I don't know which stouts I'm going to be tasting, but I'm going to be drinking some imperial stouts tomorrow during I the think snow. You need to open up a blog just for that. I think I should. I know. I yeah. keep talking about doing a beer blog, but I'm like, there's so many beer blogs, but there's so many tech blogs, right? So. <laughs> but there's only one Mary Jo. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about and, you guys? Any, note, any snow plans? Uh, I know, not in Florida, but. <laughs> I'll let, I'll let he, ha he, has sun, he has sun plans because Florida is always a sunshine state, but. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Not, For me, not it's. <laughs> For me, it's going out there and cleaning it all up. <laughs> I know, right? I know That's they're saying the maybe part. maybe like six to eight inches here. That's a lot right. of snow in New York. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I have uh, I have my two daughters that are going to keep me busy all week in between oh, dance practice and yeah, I have to coach their soccer. So oh man, you got to get a full I, calendar. <laughs> I was going to say I wish there was snow to just keep us indoors so we don't have to do anything, but <laughs> yeah, I don't right. get that lucky. <laughs> nice. Well, Mary Jo, I want to say I'm at the end of all my questions unless Eric okay. has anything. 
No, I think today. we I think we addressed everything. And thanks again so much. You you really yeah. have the most expertise of anyone that we've spoken with so far on the podcast. And wow. we appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I mean, me I could sit and talk with you all day, but I know we all have stuff to do. No, you know what? <laughs> next, next time there's an in-person event, we'll have a little, like, you know, yeah. meet up and we can all just, like, resume this conversation in person, which will be great to see everybody. Yes. Oh, sounds great. good. If COVID ever goes away. I know, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. I, I really Hopefully. want to go to build this year, but, I mean, who knows if we're going to actually do it, right? I know. Well, I'm hoping that they're not having the accountants going like, you know, virtually speaking, this is cost I wonder saving about millions. That. I really seriously wonder about that because I'm sure they're saving so much money having this, these events virtually. But it's not the same, right? No. <laughs> no There's very no much. swag well, for number one. You exactly. Any cool stickers, any cool socks. No, I know, no, right? No, cool no marshmallows in the press room. Like, I yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, the companies themselves save money, but they lose on the network. I think that's where all the like, yeah, you know, yeah. handshake contracts start true. happening. That's true. Yep. Yep. But anyway. Anyway, well, thanks, thanks you guys. Yeah. Thanks why don't, why don't you tell everyone where they could find yeah. you before okay. you go? Oh, good. Thanks. Um, so I'm on Twitter at Mary Jo Foley. I try to respond to people who are reasonable on Twitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my blog is called allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's my ZDNet blog. And I, every Wednesday, I'm on Windows Weekly with my co-host, Paul Therat, where we talk for two hours, usually, about all things Microsoft. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Thanks so much care. again, Have Mary Jo. Yeah, take it all easy. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye. Okay, people can find me at Mindhead1 on Twitter. Where can people find you? Avac Jern. Yeah, and for any other news uh, or late breaking stuff, features, editorials, giveaways, contests, things like that. You can find all that on Microsoft.com or on our Twitter as well under the same title on Microsoft. Uh, if you are interested in gaming, we also have a Pinterest page that's being held by one of our uh, dear writers. Uh, you can go over there and check out all the gaming information. Uh, there's more to come, assuming uh, this partnership with Activision and everything else goes through. Uh, we also have an Instagram you can follow us there on that I'm sorely lacking on adding content, but I will start getting on to it. It's a little busy. Uh, and uh, all the other places, uh, I think, I don't know if we might have a Facebook somewhere, but mainly Twitter and our website is where you get all the latest breaking news. And if you guys like to join us on the podcast one day, just let us know. Shoot us an email to podcast at onmicrosoft.com and we, we might reach out to you and get you on the show so you could chat with us. Yeah, and if you are maybe camera shy, but there are some people that you would like us to talk to, please let us know. Uh, or if you have contacts with them, reach out to them for us on our behalf, and we'll love to follow up. We want to just make sure that we are inviting any and everybody who is dealing in the world of Microsoft to, you know, come have a say, come have a minute with us. And as always, thanks for joining us, everyone, and see you again soon. Same place, same time. Yeah, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>